very warm welcome from ET Studio, CTHR World and Coursera. I'm Divina Lasson and today we're here to deep dive into the future of learning and work, creating more equal opportunity in a more digital world. Now, through this insightful conversation, we will explore the role of technology and learning, skill development and employability, overcoming language barriers, as well as the paths to maximizing the impact and much more. To discuss this and understand the future of learning and work, we have with us today a very esteemed panel of experts. Do join me in welcoming our guest today, Ashwani Prashara, CHRO, RIL Hydrocarbons, and Raghav Gupta, MD India and Asia Pacific Coursera. Gentlemen, welcome. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here at ET Studios. Thank you for joining today. Thank you for having me. Coming me over. Wonderful to be here and looking forward to the conversation. Yes. Absolutely, well. and who better to sit and talk to because we're here to discuss the future of learning and the workplace. And we're really going to deep dive into both your experience and insights into what you foresee as the future of the workplace. So, just to kick start, um, Ashwini, maybe we can start with you. Um, could you help us understand, uh, just to lay a foundation, what you think organizations really should keep in mind? of when it comes to developing learning programs, when it comes to developing uh, the relevant in-house ecosystem to adequately support employees when uh, upskilling and learning for new roles? Okay, so that's, uh, that's an interesting question. But let me try and uh, give a little bit of context here and, and uh, look at, look at uh, what's happened in the world to begin with. Okay, so uh, we've had COVID, okay, we've had Brexit, uh, you have the Ukraine war and, you know, if we were thinking about it or having this conversation maybe three years earlier, yeah. one would have used words like VUCA or BANI or RUP or TUNA. But uh, to me now, it is it is tsunami disruption. I, 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 I would think, you know, we are in a world of tsunami disruption, actually. And if we were to think about learning and in that context, digital transformation is at the heart of it and uh, if you're thinking digital transformation to me there are three elements there okay you, you have technology uh, you obviously need talent uh, and then uh, more importantly from my perspective is the ecosystem that you need to create as we are getting into this uh, world of digital learning but when you're talking technology you know you talk generative AI transformers you have generational adversarial networks, so on and so forth. And organizations will stay ahead of the curve. There is no other uh, you know, way. Uh, otherwise, they'll get consumed by this. Uh, if you're thinking talent, uh, again, uh, you will, organizations will continue to have this war for talent. However, as an individual, they will continue to upskill, given the platforms that are available, the opportunities that are available, so on and so forth. So I don't see that as a concern, uh, per se. But what we, we need to think about is that as we head into this world, there's a complete paradigm shift which is happening on three, uh, three counts, uh, really, as we, as we think about it. Firstly, uh, really, it is about a mindset issue, okay? Uh, the mindset being as follows. Well, you know, you had knowledge uh, which was absolutely, uh, what should I say, uh, sacrosanct earlier. Now it is completely democratized. So, so the mindset shift has to be on how you use that knowledge. Uh, what is the means to an end from, from that knowledge perspective? Okay, uh, that's one. The second thing really is how to work in teams in a more collaborative way. You know, earlier you had one team, you stayed with it, you stayed with it for a decade more. Now you're going to be working in multiple teams across uh, continents, multi-generational teams, and working on multitasking at the same time. So how do you collaborate? How do you work together in teams? And how do you manage it? And I'll make this final comment. I think integrity is something that uh, we need to be conscious of. Uh, to me, there's no right, right way to do a wrong thing from an integrity perspective. Uh, but that's where data integrity, professional integrity, everything else comes into play. So this whole ecosystem is stuff that organizations will need to think about and work on. And how do you create it in the context of uh, digital learning, which will democratize learning significantly? It already has. Wow. Thank you for that. That's very, uh, very in-depth uh, foundation that we've just laid there. And Raghav, love to bring you in on this. As Ashwini keeps mentioning, 
it's really about the ecosystem, the foundation of organizations when it comes to learning how to take care of their employees in developing them, upskilling them, uh, training them to work across uh, borders and so on. So what are some of the key elements to this? What are some of the um, formulae of success that you have seen till now? Yeah, and I think just on your point and Ashwini's point on building an ecosystem, right? Uh, I think this happened over the last many, many years that uh, technology, which Ashwini spoke about, uh, you know, has always changed. It's not a new thing. What is new is the pace at which technology is changing, right? COVID, digitalization, Gen AI, the pace at which technology is changing is different. What that does is for all of us as working professionals, uh, learning skills was always important. The pace at which you need to build these skills is much faster. The half life of a skill is shorter and shorter and shorter. And in that context, traditionally, companies would provide learning to their employees themselves. But that's no longer feasible because of all of this change and the pace of change, right? And that's where an ecosystem has a massive role to play. Because today, if a technology like Gen AI comes out, can uh, Coursera as a platform bring learning opportunities from open AI to say, look, don't try to create this yourself, but let's get the best in the world to be able to now provide you that learning opportunity. And COVID has, for better or worse, forced us all to become online learners, right? So we know this is doable, and that's where an ecosystem has a big role to play. And in the context of all of this, uh, you know, in our work with many, many companies, I see there used to be a point in time when uh, learning and building skills was a good to have, but for most HR leaders, and even for many business leaders, it's now a top three priority. Most, you know, leaders will tell you, look, unless we skill our talent into the right levels of technology, irrespective of the business that we might be in, it's a critical part, right? And many companies are technology companies, but increasingly technology means computers and data science and artificial intelligence. So even in, for the, you know, uh, lack of a better word, even in traditional businesses, you know, using computer science, data science, AI as technologies is becoming very important. And I was talking to somebody the other day and this person said, look, I did my MBA in marketing pre-social media. So that MBA has no meaning today, right? And so similarly, if you did mechanical engineering in a pre-AI uh, era, that mechanical engineering probably doesn't have as much meaning if you're somebody with 15, 20 years of experience. So it's just larger global forces pointing to the fact that this is a must-have and the solution is an ecosystem as opposed to uh, an approach of saying we'll do it ourselves. So I'd just like to pick on a couple of points. I think very interesting, okay? Uh, you talked about uh, learning amongst the top three priorities and it's so true, right? Um, if you're looking at, uh, uh, looking at organizations, whichever organization it is, you know, safety has to be a way of life, okay? Now you've started having holistic well-being as a way of life. And I would add learning as a way of life, okay? Uh, I'm not rank ordering them. Uh, they're all equally important. And uh, I've talked about COVID. To me, what COVID did was it skipped a decade from usage of technology. You, you, you just skipped a decade, uh, you know, with, with COVID. So every adversity, like they say, has an opportunity. This was the opportunity that COVID brought. And what it also did was started to create the learning pull. Uh, traditionally, you've always had to push learning down, but now you've had this learning pull come into play. I mean, that's a really uh, relevant and fantastic point, how COVID has accelerated the digitalization of the learning process. So given this premise, um, and we are talking of Gen AI, it's uh, absolutely connected to our conversation today. How would you say uh, Raghav organizations can really leverage to the best possible extent the impact of emerging technologies like Gen AI in, in the training and learning process? Yeah, firstly, I think it's important to understand, you know, there was a time when technology and data science skills were meant for people working in technology, working in data science. If you were a software engineer, you should learn technology. If you were a data analyst, you should learn data science. But Gen AI is a general purpose technology. So, you know, I use Excel, but I can do a lot more if I were to use Gen AI. It's important to kind of understand that. And second, uh, these are new skills, right? Uh, to be able to build these new skills takes time, it takes effort, and so on. 
about a month and a half ago bcg and harvard came out with a study and bcg the management consulting firm uh, put 600 management consultants through an exercise where they got them to do some and these are knowledge workers right management consultants so they got them to do some task and they looked at what quality of work and what productivity came out of that and they plotted it on a chart and there was a wide range and there were averages and there were people who were faster there were people who were slower etc to all of these 600 people they then gave gen ai tools the range narrowed the average shifted up by 25% and the average the new average was better than the best performers earlier right very simple uh, analysis and so the debate that is gen ai going to disrupt managers i think the way to frame it and think about it is to say managers who use gen ai versus managers who don't use gen ai are the ones who are going to get disrupted and these are examples which are coming right so what we've been doing on our side is saying look this is technology which is changing very quickly how do you make sense of it and many of us have probably played around with chat gpt and you know it can write you an email and all of that but that's very basic levels of usage right how do you take it to the next levels so we've created content to say first is literacy gen ai for everyone what can i do with this technology second for enterprise adoption of gen ai leaders have to drive it with like with any other thing in an enterprise so gen ai for leaders how do you get the leadership in a company to understand what this technology is and then to bring that into their strategy and then finally to say there are specific job roles where gen ai will have a larger impact if these job roles are around data if these job roles involve language then there will be larger impact and so how do you bring learning on gen ai to specific teams namely marketing sales software development product r&d supply chain etc etc uh so that's the approach and to me and i'm building a little bit on what ashwini said earlier this is a tsunami of gen ai skills which is coming right and all of us need to be ready to be able to face this tsunami as well absolutely and as you very interestingly mentioned one of the uh, categories where it can be used is to transcend language barriers and i believe at coursera this is something that you're working yeah. on quite strongly could you share some insights on how gen ai is really helping you bridge the language gap yeah it's a it's a simple point but it's an important uh, point in just in terms of impact you know so far we've had this situation where a lot of content that gets generated which is high quality content is english content right and not just from an india perspective but globally if you don't uh, if you're not somebody proficient at english then you're limited in terms of consuming this content we've always been figuring out ways to translate that content into many many languages it used to take 10 lakh rupees and it or 8 lakh rupees to translate a course from one english language to one more language it used to take 3 months now it costs 10000 rupees and it takes 24 hours using ml uh, translations so we've been going around the world and saying look which all languages should we translate content into and then in early january we translated uh, we announced the translation of 4000 courses into hindi so if you're somebody who's working chances are you're good at english but you might also have a level of comfort in hindi and you can use a combination of both of those and then the intent is let's take it into you know marathi and tamil and kannada and so on and so forth but technology now enables us to do that at speed at scale at a cost that makes sense as well wonderful ashwini would love to hear from you how uh, in your experience organizations are really best leveraging technology gen ai ai ml how how is it really being utilized in a way that is integrated into the ethos of how the organization functions Absolutely I think what technology has done is uh, you know it is democratized uh, learning completely uh, you know you've been able to put learning into every single corner of the country uh, at at uh, well uh, virtually real time and in our partnership with Coursera I think uh, we are the only or we are at least the first organization by far which have actually taken it to the families so we've extended it to the families for them to learn at their own pace to get certified through uh, the program and there's no limit to how many certificate certified programs you can end up doing so can you imagine this uh, you know which was not even uh, you could not even think of earlier a housewife at home a homemaker who in her spare time uh, could actually upskill significantly and actually get on to do multiple different things it's so exciting actually uh, in terms of uh, looking at that so to me that's that's been the greatest boon as far as uh, technology has been concerned 
you you just manage to do it real time you manage to reach every single individual that you want to and provided that opportunity uh, you know for people uh, which earlier was not possible not feasible and this you is know, a this yeah. is a unique program sorry to cut you yeah. but this is a unique program that not only employees but family members get to learn on coursera and i'll share this on a slightly lighter note you know at coursera earlier we used to have coursera for friends and family so i'd given a coursera license to my son and he was going to go from school to college and so i sat him down and said look i think i should talk to you about coursera and what you can learn and he's like what would you like me to tell you because i've already seen a lot of it because you already had a coursera license now this was a small anecdote but now it's happening across lakhs of employees at reliance which i think is pretty yeah nice. and 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 again it's a mindset issue you know the mindset issue is why should it be in the domain of a select few why should we not take it to anybody who wants to use it yes. because it is available there and i think that's the approach that we've taken yes. this is the era we are living in now as democratizers if i can broad base a little bit of what ashwini has said which is democratizing learning and if we think about this at an india level right and if we think about this at a new education policy level while it's a slightly hard pill to swallow i think it's also helpful to appreciate that there is weakness so far in our higher education system there are a few very high quality institutions the iits the iims iisc and so on but then there are a very large number of very average quality institutions and so for all of us as working professionals right irrespective of the role that we might have or the level of seniority that we might have technology but also the fact that some of the platform that all of us have come out of might not be as strong as one would wish it to be is important to keep in mind so this is not just a individual company context but at a wider country wide level that for this demographic dividend to get realized it's important for us to democratize learning in general across the country i think is a bigger country level imperative as well Right. and it's all about you know in our context i think we're looking at it in an overall context of we care which really means uh, how do you ensure that every single person that is associated either directly or indirectly with the organization has the opportunities which were not there earlier and provide those opportunities so it's it's, it's just very very fascinating and and uh, very exciting actually exciting but surely there must be some uh, unforeseen challenges as well right and circumstances that again with the advent of all the new technology and the constant very rapid and dynamic shifts that are happening that uh, you have to keep up with as well real time can you share some of the challenges that you face and how you're overcoming them uh, see i i said that earlier i think the challenge to me is how do you use this wonderful gift that we have now in in a in a manner where we don't compromise on integrity of its usage you know to use it for stuff that it should not be used is 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 again an individual mindset issue and if we do this i think we would create a much much uh, wonderful world to live in uh, having said that uh, there will be people who will you know uh, they also want to stay ahead of the curve so you have hackers you have others who are all also thinking ahead of the game and uh, i would only hope and wish that uh, the development of technology stays far ahead of those people who are wanting to derail this uh, fantastic uh, journey actually and i would add right across the hundreds of programs that we run uh, many a times at the start of the program we will sit down with the customer and say look you need to answer two questions from an employee perspective an employee is thinking can i learn and do i want to learn now do i want to learn is a question you need to answer as an external ecosystem partner we cannot answer that but are you putting in the right environment for the lack of a better word the right carrot and sticks to be able to say yes if you learn this is how it will help you and if you don't learn this is the implication that it might have on your career etc etc so basically try and answer that question well do i want to learn can i learn is where we have a big role to play because we can bring high quality relevant content in an engaging environment and what we are also finding is with gen ai technology you can now make the learning experience a lot richer you know we've said look uh, when you're learning online it can be a lonely experience you for hours you know in a course so we've launched a gen ai based uh, bot called coach 
where you can chat with it and it can help you understand some things that you might not be understanding. It can say what is the relevance of what I'm learning to my career and so on and so forth. So we can make it a richer experience. And we're also saying to companies that, you know, there used to be a point in time where all content used to be created within a company. And I'm sure your L&D team used to have many, many more people earlier and they were creating content and so on. And then there came a time when a lot of content started coming from external partners such as Coursera. We are now using Gen AI technology and we've created a product feature called Course Builder. We're saying let's merge these two. So if you're doing leadership learning at Reliance using Coursera, can the introduction to that course come from Ashwini and other senior leaders? But then can we bring in leadership frameworks from London Business School or NCIAD or others? And then can we complement it with leadership lessons from the Mahabharat from IIM Ahmedabad? And instead of one organization creating that learning pathway, can a combination of Reliance and LBS and IIM Ahmedabad put that learning experience? But not take months doing this, but do this within a few hours. And can you stitch a content piece together? And then Gen AI is kind of enabling some of that to happen. On that, I'd like to make one more comment. See, we've talked a lot about technology, about you know AI, generative AI, etc. I think we should be cognizant of the fact that we don't lose the connect with the people. The individual connect is absolutely critical. So in my mind, in this day and age of high tech, do not lose the high touch. Wonderful. Absolutely. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Very, very relevant uh, insight and really thank you for sharing. On a closing note, is there one key takeaway that you would like to share with organizations, with HR uh, leaders out there when it comes to really keeping in mind the true transformation of learning and the workplace? One key takeaway. I would say learn Gen AI, as simple as that. <laughs> I would say make it accessible to as many people as you can in all walks of life. Go beyond, go beyond boundaries. Don't create boundaries. You know, let people decide what they want to learn. But, uh, you know, just, just go beyond boundaries. All right, gentlemen, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you here on ET Studios. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you.